Man always has questioned the vanity of life. The book of Ecclesiastes even uses the term vanity multiple times. And all of the ancient philosophies question the meaning and, and of life and why we even exist at all. And today we have a significant number of people acting on the natural result of that kind of evolutionary theory. If we are nothing but a protoplastic blob, why do we even care? What is the purpose of life if after we die we're nothing? Well, if you're joining us in reading through this six-month reading plan through the book of Psalms, today's reading is Psalm 89, verses 36 through 52, and I encourage you to read that psalm. Well, Psalm 89, verses 47 and 48 says this, Remember what my span of life is, for what vanity you have created the sons of men. What man can live and not see death? Can he deliver his soul from the power of Sheol? Well, Ethan is asking the same question that many people ask. Why have we even been created? What is the purpose of life? And many times, um, I'll say most of the time, when a person has no relationship with Christ, they have a fatalistic view of life. But in addition to this fatalism, they also have a view of self-centeredness and it's a pleasure-seeking existence. Advertising points out this, and it gets people to assume that if they purchase a certain product or do a certain thing, then they will be fulfilled. Well, this is evident by the number of ads that seem to point to overweight people or people who are old. Without, whether it's exercise or what they eat, some certain scientific formula that's going to burn fat, they all have one goal in mind. Personal satisfaction with life without thinking about eternity. Now, I'm amused by the advertisements for skin care products that will temporarily revive and tighten aging skin. The advertisement tagline is it will take years off of your life. Well, that's just simply not true. You have to continue to apply that goop or you will go back to your natural self. It is only God who can deliver us from death. Hebrews 2, 14-15 tells us that when a person fears uh, death or does not have a relationship with Christ, they are going to fear death. And they will do everything they can possibly do to prevent or at least delay the inevitable. But God has a remedy for this. If we begin a relationship with Christ, all of that vanity is turned in, into a meaningful situation. If we become a, and have a relationship with God, we know our future. But just having and beginning that relationship is not enough. When a child is born, they cannot exist on their own, and it would be foolish for the parent to have heard the attitude that says, well, I've done that, um, I've had that experience, what else do I need to do? That parent is going to nurture the child into maturity. Our walk with Christ is exactly the same way. We cannot just stop with the beginning relationship. We must carry on if we're going to be fulfilled and answer the question of why God placed us on the earth. Now, last Sunday, we celebrated Christ's resurrection, his guarantee of life if we will place our trust in him. Have you done that, and are you doing that on a daily basis? And if you would like a PDF copy of this entire reading plan, please send an email to PhineasJacobus at runningtohim.net.